for the next year. Yeah. Very nice. Well, now all the kids who watch The Office will get these jokes, so it's good. (laughs) (laughs) Alright, is that it? uh, That's that's all for my news. Uh, I guess we'll just head into Rex, dude. Whoever is the next one in that. Ricky Rex. Ricky Rex. Ricky Rex. And now it's time for the weekly recommendations. James? All right, uh, so I got two. Um, One is uh, Adam Sandler's newest um, film to go straight to Netflix in his, uh, like, 30-movie film contract that he has. Um, It's uh, uh, Hoobie Halloween, I believe that's what it's called. Yeah, I watched that one. Um, It's actually, uh, to me at least, there are some scenes that, I mean, it felt really funny um, in some scenes, and then, but it was, it was, it was a cool kind of, uh, take on Halloween for Adam Sandler. I don't think I've ever seen him do a, a movie like this that's kind of centered around Halloween. It was really fun, and, uh, uh, him and, like, you know, Kevin James and, and, uh, everyone that he always does movies with now, uh, they're always fun to watch, even though sometimes it, sometimes it may not be the best movie. Uh, it's always fun to see them and because you can tell that they're so comfortable with each other um, after working with each other for the last 30 years or whatever it may be. But um, definitely check that one out if you're a fan. I know some of uh, Adam Sandler's stuff has been kind of hit or miss, mostly miss from the last couple of years. But um, g- give it a try. If you don't like it, then... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> um, yeah. And then my other one is... Uh, it's a show that... Uh, I believe, um, I think, uh, when Alyssa was on here a long, a while back when we did the Mean Girls and Jawbreakers episode, she had wrecked it. Um, it is, uh, Jane the Virgin. I don't remember what, sh- what network it was on. CW. It's a CW, okay. Um, I'm actually, we, I just started watching it right now because, um, I don't know, I just randomly put it on one time and then I kind of got hooked into it. Um, I never really watched it uh, when she watched it, so she's rewatching and kind of remembering things. But it's really fun. It's, it's a, a, like an Americanized version of a telenovela. If you don't know what that is, like a, yeah. it's like a, a Mexican soap opera that's like over the top, dramatic, and there's like people being murdered every episode, or like someone has a twin that did something and and like an evil twin or whatever. But uh, if you're a fan of those, definitely check this out. Cause it's like a, basically just a, um, a you know. An American version of that, so check that out. Nice. And that, those are my two wrecks. I got three wrecks. So um, my first one's gonna be called Mr. Watermelon. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, my next one's gonna be called The Other Lamb on Hulu. Um, it's pretty nuts. It's like in the bane of uh, Midsummer. So it's very culty Swedish like people. So basically think of like what happens at midsummer when they're not like doing the like bringing people over. It's like just the cult like you know what I mean? Like what do they do when they don't have like guests over, I guess. But like uh <laughs> other than that, it's pretty like crazy dude. It gets very like deep and shit and it's pretty like nuts. Uh the other lamb on Hulu, I suggest you watch it if you like Midsummer, because it also has some like moments like that and super deep moments. Um, my second recommendation is going to be called uh, Apollo 18. Even though this has like a, a 24% on Rotten, uh, I thought this movie was dope for what it is. It's like a sci fi horror. If you like Interstellar, but it turns into like people just basically like two people dying in like the most horrific way. That's basically what happens. <laughs> um, that's my second rec, Apollo 18. It's on Netflix. Uh, my third rec is going to be called Wolf Cop, and it's on Hulu. And it has a fucking 65% on uh, Rotten. And I, I I was watching it, and it was super hilarious. Dude. I don't know why. It just has that cheese ball moments that like fucking are fucking amazing. I don't know why. They just make the movie, and like, I suggest you watch Wolf Cop on Hulu. Uh, <laughs> it's on there, so fuck it, why not? If you have Hulu, <laughs> um, and uh, that's my three wrecks. Nice. The the other lamb, 
Apollo 18 and Wolf Cop. Not bad. Nice. I've been wanting to watch Wolf Cop. That's on my list. Good, done it good, yet. Good, There's good two of them, right? There's yeah. Wolf Cop 2. Um, I'll There's, go next. Yeah, fucking outlandish uh, movies, dude. All of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, my wrecks are... Uh, well, Star Trek Discovery's third season just premiered oh, shit, nice. on C- uh, CBS All Access. Mm-hmm. I'm a huge fan of the series. I, I love it. Um, it's a very good mix between the old and the new Star Trek. Yeah. So it has both the action and then the uh, philosophy of it. So I, I really enjoyed it. I just watched that first episode this week. Um, if you, they, I think CBS All Access is offering like the 30, three, 30 days free again. Um, so check out the first two seasons uh, and then watch the third or wait until the third's out but it's definitely worth the watch if you're a Star Trek fan whether you're an original fan or a fan of the newer movies I think that pleases both and then um, since I was on Shudder I saw another movie <laughs> that actually piqued my interest it was called Scare Me it has uh, a, uh, Aya Cash who played uh, Storm Stormbreak or Stormfront on the boys this season and she was in a show called you're the worst on on t on fx and it's on hulu right now uh it's really funny show um but um the movie is about two writers who rent out a cabin to you know work on their stuff power goes out so they hang out with each other and they tell each other scary stories um it's very much they're just talking the whole time telling each other stories and you can tell that these people are full on actors because only actors can do this and not cringe when they start like acting out <laughs> in front of stuff like telling these yeah. movies talking to e- e- themselves um the guy who stars in it wrote it and directed it oh, so nice. um, it's pretty neat it was just uh, p- uh, selected for the Sundance um to me it was very kind of slow but it picked up once the pizza delivery guy got there which is like probably the last third of the film <laughs> but it's still pretty interesting. Uh, I I enjoyed it. I like her a lot. She's great. Just her facial expressions are awesome. Um, I think it's worth. It's not super, super scary. It's just more of like a fun, scary theme type movie. Yeah. In a cabin. So that was worth watching. But again, it's all talking. Not a lot of fright. Sometimes cringeworthy. <laughs> so just go in knowing that, and I think you'll enjoy it more than my girlfriend did. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, those are my T Rex. Very nice. Um, I only have one. I what? Can't <laughs> um, so I've I, for some reason um, I started really getting into Portuguese films, and I re- I want to wreck or Brazilian films in particular. Um, so I want to wreck the most famous one that a lot of people know. And that is um, City of God. Um, it's streaming right now on HBO Max. Um, if you guys haven't seen it, this I, I feel the most acclaimed Brazilian uh, Brazilian movie yeah, out there. Yeah. It um, it definitely touches on on very touchy subjects from that country, especially really the the um, the I want to say the favela of City of God, mm-hmm. which a lot of people don't know. It's like like something like if you're in the east coast it would it would be like a like the bronx or staten island or like if you're like a for, landmark yeah like a, like right. like a landmark thing like barrio logan or like in la like east um east la or something like that um so if you guys haven't checked of course a lot of people have checked it out but a lot of people are very this is a very obscured movie for some people so uh yeah go check it out it is um all in in Portuguese, but I mean, I love subtitles now. I've learned to love subtitles, so um, so yeah, go check it out. It's a really interesting movie. Um, has a, it was nominated for an Academy Award, so go check it out. Yeah, I've seen like that poster a lot. I never watched it yet, though. Excuse never me? watched City of God mm, with with uh, subtitles. Like I really have to be in the mood, oh, and then when I am, like I can knock out three. <laughs> but it it takes me like it really a mental set for me, I guess. But um, I'm starting to watch it more and more as I get older too. And I think shows like Narcos and 
other shows like that yeah. really like bridge the gap for people who don't want to yeah. and they start realizing because you start reading it in their voice you could hear them saying it in like english even though you're yeah. reading it it's it's weird how your brain tricks you that way it's um it's kind of like what um what man on fire did for the ultra corruption a lot of people didn't yeah. know what's going on and the um I kidnappings wish, that were going up in mexico city i wish you had more time <laughs> love that movie <laughs> dakota fanning's best work some would say Oh. <laughs> no, you're right. Twilight was way better. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Good wreck, though. I'll check it out. Now, and that's it for me. Nice. Uh, I have three for this episode. Nice. Oh. <laughs> my f- <laughs> it's three my, threes? My, my first one is uh, it's a brand new film. It's out on digital, and if you're you're doing the movie thing you can i think it's in theaters in the drive-in uh love and monsters oh i want to nice. see that one with, oh, yeah, yeah. with dylan o'brien holy shit this movie will not let you down it's so much fun um the monsters are so well done the cgi like blew my mind at how like authentic it actually looks great story obviously post-apocalyptic there's a fucking awesome dog throughout the whole thing um great storytelling and uh, I'm glad that they released this right now. I feel like it's something that we all need. Um, check this out. It's called Love and Monsters. It's twenty dollars though to rent, right? Is it? I thought it was lower. Was it's it was like seven. <laughs> was it? Oh no, if it's lower, I'm definitely getting it. But I thought it was like twenty, and I was like, because mm, I watched the preview and I really wanted yeah. to see it. The uh-huh. preview looks but, amazing. Yeah, dude. Uh, that's a good. That's a wreck just off the preview for me. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. I'm there <laughs> all day. And then uh, my last two are actually both on Prime. First one is Hurricane Streets from 97. I've been... Uh, this is a film that I, I, I saw as a, as a kid and, and I for, like I haven't been able to find it anywhere. It's one of those super obscure films. I don't even think it's been probably transferred to Blu-ray yet. Uh, it was an indie darling at the time. I think uh, it was my. This film was my introduction to that song uh, by Marcy Playground. I think they're called uh, yeah. "Sex and mm-hmm. Candy." Yeah, it's an amazing song. Um, this film's great. It's about. It's in the vein of kids, but more like they're a little bit older. Um, mm-hmm. Just about street kids and and their struggles. You know, very great stuff. It's it has an eighty eight on Rotten. Nice. If that means anything to you guys. I haven't there. seen that in a minute, dude. So. Not after Basket Case. It means shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it actually beat Basket Case. Yeah, still, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> Hurricane Streets, very good film. Uh, great trip back to the 90s as well. And then another, an, an, an earlier 90s film that I watched uh, for for the first time in a long long time since i was a kid american heart ironically with jeff bridges and a very young um uh, edward furlong about an ex-con uh trying to basically fix his like his relationship with his estranged son uh i'd never seen that but now i'm gonna check it out yeah it's on prime right now very heavy drama um, especially if you love Jeff Bridges, is like it's it's great to see him do some serious work because he's a great he's a great actor, you know. And then uh, Edward Furlong, like the the few films that he actually did are, are great. The guy was a good actor as well. So check this out, American Heart. It's got an eighty on Ryan. Mm. Wow, <clears throat> <laughs> crazy heart. And that's, yes, I did. I love that movie. It's so good. It was. Um, I concur. <laughs> Um, all right, main focus. Let's do yeah. this. Moving on. Five, four, three, two, one. And now for the movie focus of the week. All right, the main focus. We're talking about Haunt. It's from 2019. It's obviously a horror film. It runs at one hour and 32 minutes, and it's got a 70 on Rotten. It was directed and written by Scott Beck and Brian Woods, starring Katie Stevens, Lauren McLean, Will Britton, Andrew Lewis, Coldwell, Saji Raja, and Damien Mafai. Taking place one Halloween night in Illinois, an ill-fated decision to enter an extreme haunted house leaves a group of friends wondering whether or not they will truly make it out alive. 
Although films like Haunt have indeed been attempted before, the writers of A Quiet Place deliver a 